You know, one of the commonalities that I I see among patients with osteoarthritis they have is I think everybody recognizes the loss of the range of motion, whether it be getting down to tie one's shoes or if somebody's involved in sports like you know, yoga, Pilates, maybe they they do dance, is they notice the progressive loss of range of motion. And I think you know, one of the things that we sometimes will see or I'll hear in my clinic is that patients will be told by industry or others that, oh, I need to have this new implant, this dual mobility implant in order to recover my range of motion because you get better range of motion with it. And I think, you know, I think it's a little bit of a misstatement to the patient because in the end, the dual mobility improves the biomechanical range of motion of the implant before instability meaning before the hip dislocates, it can travel through a larger arc. But the, the problem is it doesn't always correlate to the clinical range of motion, which is what the patient is more worried about. The patient's worried typically about, hey, can I get down? Can I, you know, can I do the splits? Can I do, clip my toenails? I mean, that's what they're worried about. And they think that, you know, by going with this new implant, that's going to really improve their range of motion. And it's actually, it's not the implant that does it. It's, it's just having the replacement will actually generally improve the range of motion just by fixing the articulation. You know, the ball and the socket joint, they're so dysfunctional that typically the range of motion is lost. The dual mobility may be a good solution for somebody who is at very high risk of dislocation, but it doesn't always mean that you're gonna get better range of motion with this new implant design. Not only that, there are some potential problems with this new articulation, which we haven't fully figured out. It's like intraprosthetic you know, dislocation or impingement, the wear of these implants. We haven't sorted all of these issues out. And so, you know, I would approach these implants with caution. And if somebody's offering it to you as a patient, I'd ask, you know, good questions about why. You know, what are the things that make this implant uh, more suitable to my problem? And is this really going to change my clinical range of motion over a standard prosthesis?